Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Deskside Chats podcast presented by the City of Northport. My name is Madison Hyde, and I'm the Deputy Communications Manager for the City. Everyone has a story, right? In this podcast, I'll be learning the stories of our employees right here in the City of Northport. Join me as I chat with folks from all walks of life across departments and divisions. We're building a community of unity. Get to know the staff working for you every day. Now let's lean in and chat desk side. This week, I'm chatting with Brittany Kammerer, Community Outreach Coordinator for Neighborhood Development Services. From being raised by old hippies to talking about how she doesn't watch TV, I know, mind blown. She's got lots of interesting things to share. Let's dive in. Hello, Brittany. Hi, Madison. Welcome to the show. You're my inaugural interviewee. How does it feel? I am super excited. (laughs) (laughs) I can hear it in your voice. All right, so as you know, this is the desk side chat, so we're going to get to know you a little bit better. Um, One nugget of information that you gave me that was super fascinating to me was that you were raised by old hippies. Now, I need to know what that means, because you know there's a stereotype, like the long hair, the mustache, the bell bottoms, whatever. That's too... All of it. Yeah, but tell me more. Tell me more about the old hippies. Like, where did you start? Where were you born? That kind of thing. So I was born in New Jersey born and raised in New Jersey. And I was actually raised by my grandparents. They adopted me at a very young age, but I call my mom and my dad. Uh, They were every bit of old hippies um, (laughs) from the long hair. And my mom had long hair too, but my dad had really, really long hair (laughs) and a long mustache that he kept in um, like ponytail braids. And they're always different colors. Yes. And um, they believed in self, being self-sustaining and living off the land and not really going to big box stores and making your own clothes and toothpaste and bread. And so while I'm not that far (laughs) into it, you know, I still have a lot of that mentality as well, where I make my own soaps, my own toothpaste, my own lotions, my makeup, you know, different things, because I just don't want all the chemicals that are in a lot of today's stuff into my body. Um, So I did get that from them. Yeah. But yeah, no, they believed in like love, peace and hippie grease. Like they they were they were (laughs) the embodiment of the 60s. My dad would always tell me stories about Woodstock and how he got to meet Jimi Hendrix and all this really. Yeah. He was at Woodstock. Yes. Oh, my gosh. He has a lot of really cool stories. That's super cool. I'll get him on your next. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's he's, awesome. Yeah, though. he's like in his 80s now, but yeah. he's still, he's doing really good. He's sure. doing good. But yeah, no, um, I was just raised on being self-sustaining and keeping the earth the way that it is and not leaving a footprint. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, because I'm when I was looking at what you gave me as like a reference, I mean, I got to know, how do you make homemade toothpaste what goes into homemade toothpaste so baking soda it's super simple just baking soda and my kids won't just use baking soda because it's super salty so I just put some like mint extract in it and that's what they use and to everyone's surprise they have had no cavities so I know even the dentist is like you really need to use fluoride in your toothpaste I'm like they have no cavities they're fine she's like oh my gosh yeah so that is what we do. Wow, mm-hmm. that's the secret, huh? That Wish is I the had secret. known that when I was a kid. Just <laughs> in and out of there for cavities. Um, just bad luck with teeth, I guess. So, all right, so fast forward now. Mm-hmm. Now tell me, I know there's a fun story behind you meeting your now husband. My husband, yes. Jesse. Yes. yes, tell me more about that. So I ended up moving to Florida when I was around 14, 15, and I met Jesse in high school. We both went to Northport High, and we dated from about 15 to 20, 15 years old to 20 years old. And he was like, hey, I want to join the military. I'm going to go and I want to travel and so forth. And I was like, well, I'm not about that. So um, I'll be here when you get home if that's the route that we choose. And he said, well, listen, if I, you know, when I come home, if you're still single, we're going to get married. And I was like, okay, sure as anything. 2016, he calls me. He said, I'm getting back from my deployment in Africa. Do you want to still get married? And I was like, sure. (laughs) And that was in July of 2016. And we got married in May of uh, 2017. Wow. And, you know, we have a very, very good relationship. And we have four wonderful children. 
and uh, I could not ask for a better partner in That's this life. That's wonderful. Yep. Yeah, and you, okay, and your your youngest is kind of brand new still, right? Yeah, he bit? still smells like a baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. He just turned a year last week, so our oldest is nine. That's Lucy, and then our youngest is Waylon, so he's okay. a year. And I know that you still want more kids? Yes, I would have like 20 kids oh. if it was possible. But, the, you know, the house pricing in Northport right now is kind of high, that so might I might have tough. to hold back on yeah, that. Yeah, to get a hotel, <laughs> It's basically. hard to get a 12-bedroom yeah. house here in Northport that's <laughs> not under a million. Right. But, uh, you know, um, eventually I would like to have more kids, but we'll, we'll see. Okay. I love being a mom. I just think that there is nothing more rewarding than being a parent and coming home and seeing them. They just... Sure, and them being excited to see you, and yes. I'm sure that's an awesome feeling. It I don't is. know, I don't have any kids, but I'm sure it's an awesome. <laughs> it's feeling. kind of like when you're when you come home and your dog is super excited. Yes, except dogs okay. don't talk back. Dogs. But it, it is. It's it's right. kind of the same. Dogs don't draw on the walls. <laughs> yeah. Dogs don't flush things down the toilet. Uh, I haven't. I can honestly say none of my children have ever flushed anything down the toilet. But I have a very nice mural going on <laughs> oh, on God. my bar, <laughs> and there's just sharpie all over it. So you just yes. embrace it. Just embrace it. Yeah, I love it. You, it you got to. So it. what do you, um, just stick with family for a little bit longer before we kind of go into the work side of things, what do you and your family like to do? I know there's a lot of traveling sports, um, yes. but what do you like to do for fun, like as a, as a family? So I don't really believe in TV. Okay. Uh, I know that so many people are like, what? Because <gasps> especially in today's day and world, or d- day and time, it's really hard to not find people who don't watch TV. We yeah. don't really watch TV. We okay. don't. No tablets, no TV. Um, we go outside a lot. So we're either out on the boat, we go fishing, we have side-by-sides. We do not ride in Northport anywhere <laughs> with our side-by-sides. Side note. Um, don't but... come at her, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we go to a lot of parks, and we do a lot of traveling. We go to Georgia and Arkansas and Michigan, and we, we do a lot of traveling together as a family because my biggest thing is making memories. That's what they're going to remember. Right. You know, that, that's Not the, the material thing, Exactly. it's the memories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we are outside all the time, in the pool, you name it, we're always outside. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and did you end up in Michigan? Is that Jesse's side that's up in Michigan? That or? is Jesse's side uh, okay. up in Michigan, yes. All his right. mom and his grandparents live up there. His dad Got lives it. here in Northport. Okay. Well, do but. you know, wait, is he a football guy or not? No. Oh. Mm-mm. All right, no. Farthest thing from a football guy. Uh, he, no. okay, I was gonna he make is a, a, uh, a very big, not figure-wise, but he is a redneck. He has his ah. nice big beard. He okay. looks like a lumberjack. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's like, I mean, it is every bit of like Does he have little beads inches. in it? Not yet. No. <laughs> um, Lucy has been trying to get him to put beads and like little oh ponytails in it, but yeah. he has not gotten there quite yet. Quite yet. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. But he could be on his way. On his he way. He could be on his way to old hippies, just yes. like your, your parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So then um, this is kind of, okay, jumping even more forward, and then we're going to come back to work. Is So you said that you want to eventually live off grid. 100%. Sounds like you're yes. well on your way to that already. Yeah. But do you know where you'd want to go to accomplish that? Or like in the... Yeah, um, so Jesse thought about Michigan, but if you're not familiar with uh, Michigan winters, they're like, you know, about 12 months out of the year, and it's very cold. Correct. I'm from Wisconsin, <laughs> so I understand. You know. Yeah, I understand. And yeah. To, in order to be self-sustaining and, and live off the land and have a garden, it's it's harder to do that there. So I'm like, For let's sure. just stick to the Tennessee, you know, North Carolina area. Yeah. So that is the goal, um, okay. to purchase out there and fix something up, and eventually, maybe when the kids are a little bit older, move out there. Okay, so, and entirely yeah. off the grid. So how does 100%. that how does that work? Like for like lighting and solar. So okay. You, um, okay. Jesse knows all about the solar aspect. I will not ever understand any of that. Okay. Um, but so he would set up a solar panel area. I guess mm-hmm. is what you would call it. Yeah. And um, we would do hydroponics with fish, and we would do our own garden and raise wow. livestock. And um, I'd have to probably get really good at sewing, which probably. I'm not. I do have a sewing machine, but I okay. fail miserably every time. Um, <laughs> Got it. But that that eventually is the goal to be 100 percent self sufficient. That's awesome. That's mm-hmm. great. And that's it's cool that you're building off of you know what your parents instilled in, yeah, in you. Absolutely. That you want that to be the ultimate goal. That's awesome. So now we're going to switch to probably like less exciting stuff, but still kind of exciting stuff. <laughs> Work stuff. So Work stuff. Um, it was mentioned in the, in the intro that you're the community outreach coordinator for neighborhood development services. Correct. So tell me a little bit. I know that we see your stuff on Facebook a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, just tell me a little bit, you know, about what your days look like and what you do for work. So I help get information out to the public from NDS and NDS has four different departments. So you have 
um, code enforcement, you have building, you have planning and zoning, and you also have economic development. Uh, so I work with all of them to get everything out, like BTRs, business tax receipt, that's coming up, so I have to inform the public, and just things like that. Right. And I also attend events uh, for the city as well. Sure. And it- Economic development, is that under city manager? I'm sorry, that is under city manager, yes. I work for NDS and economic development. You you cover it all. Cover it all. (laughs) Right. I love that. And I know it can be tough, especially in NDS. There's a lot of hard-hitting topics in there that you got to deal with. The tree ordinance, impact fees, yes. And so, so how do you deal with that? How do you deal with having to share information that might not be the most favorable, you know, or... How would you deal? How do you deal with that? You know, it kind of comes with a job. Nobody likes price increases, yeah. but there, there is, there is a reason for it, and it is my job to give people the facts of why we are doing the things that we do. Is everyone going to agree with it? No, right. But you know, we do it for the benefit of the community. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we're still, you know, we're being transparent. Yes. To tell them everything. We're mm-hmm. not trying to hide it or sugarcoat exactly. anything, which I think is also yep. important. So. So you said this kind of this side of things, communication, marketing, kind of just fell in your lap. It did. So how did that? How did it fall? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, out of high school, I started working for um, Honda and Volkswagen. I was a business development specialist, and from there, um, I went into finance. So I was a finance officer, and the GM of um, the the car group at the time said, "Hey, you know, you're young. You're kind of smart." Um, <laughs> why don't you become the marketing director? And I was like, okay, I could, oh. I could do that. Uh, it was a learning curve. I've never done anything in marketing or that, sure. you know, high level of an executive position, if that's what you want to call it. Right. Um, but I learned so much and I got to meet a lot of really neat people and I got to travel throughout the United States and market the car group and open new stores and so forth. Right. So that's kind of how that fell into my lap with, okay. you know, marketing and, and PR. Yeah. So... And yeah. then, and then before this, you were at, you were working for a, a police department. I did. Right? I worked for a police department. Yeah. Um, I started. I thought I wanted to become a police officer. Um, if there are police officers listening to this, God bless you because I couldn't. I did give it a good old college try. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you. It's, I never it's gave not it a me. college try. Yeah. No. I know already. It's not for me. Yeah. Um, but I did. I worked for the Venice Police Department for about five years. And I, you know, moved on, moved on up, and yeah, right. um, I ended up becoming basically their PIO and a uh, crime analyst. It was all in one. So I think oh, anytime yeah. you work for, you know, a local municipality, you have like thirty different hats of what you do, which is right. good because I was able to gain so much experience between PR and um, being a public information officer in a, in its sense. Um, right and creating press releases and working on the analytics side too. So it was good, it was a yeah. good experience. That's what I was gonna say is, um, I'm sure there was a lot of things from that job that you brought to here. Absolutely. You know, especially yeah. with code enforcement, you know, mm-hmm. that's kind of, obviously not like law, but it's. Yeah, no, it was it was fun. It was, it was a good learning experience. I started their social media from the ground up and I built what they have now. And um, I was able to bring that experience here and just keep on rolling with that's it. That's cool, that's yeah. awesome. And you've been doing a great job. Thank you. So, Okay, now, now that you're out of left field, you're working toward getting your certified public finance officer. Yes. Certification. Yes. Um, I, I like to do like random little things to make it. So I went and got my master's degree in business administration. And then I'm like, you know what, what else can I do? That sounds fun. Like, I feel like life learning is lifelong. If I can go and get my doctor degree, I would do it in a heartbeat, you know, um, but it's extremely expensive. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I was like, you know what? I like finance. I like numbers. I like data. So I started looking at different certificates that I could get that could benefit, you know, the city as a whole. And that was one of them. So I applied. I got accepted. And it is a lot more work than I thought it would oh, be. Right. Um, but you're learning, <laughs> Maybe right? I'm not as good at numbers <laughs> as I thought I was. But I am working yeah, towards it. No, so, I understand. Yeah, I absolutely coming along. am not good with numbers. It's <laughs> so challenging. Yeah. So, all right, we're getting toward the end, but I have just a couple random questions to top this off, Mm -hmm. which is tough now, knowing that you don't watch TV. I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) Do you watch movies? No. Oh. I know. My husband, he likes watching movies, and he'll make all these little references to different things, like... He made one about something with White Castle and some Howard. Yeah, and that's I'm like, yet yeah, nope, Harold and never Kumar, saw it. Like I'm sorry. So I'm the worst person for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cross out, cross out. Um, all right, favorite ice cream? 
Ooh, mint chocolate chip. <gasps> Mine too. There is actually a company here in Northport. Whoop, whoop. Yes. Um, called the Q Ice Cream Truck. Incredible ice cream. Best mint chocolate chip ever. He was starting out his venture. My husband um, owns a lawn care business here, and um, he is one of his customers. And he said, I'm thinking about starting an ice cream truck. Can you test some of these flavors for me? And I'm like, mint chocolate chip, please, please, please. And he would give us tubs of this ice cream. Oh my God. The best ice cream you've ever had in your whole entire life. And his mint chocolate chip is to die for. Oh, oh my God. gosh. <laughs> okay. What a great local business, first of all. Yes. Always got to support the local businesses. Mm -hmm. They were at the Freedom Festival. Yes. And yes. I was working it, mm -hmm. and I got some of their ice cream. Wasn't it I so just good? discovered it mm -hmm. Monday. I got the banana pudding. Ooh. That oh my sounds gosh. so good. I know. Oh, my God. It was amazing. <laughs> yes. So, mm -hmm. anyway, shout, shout out. The Q. Go find it. Go find the truck wherever yes. it's sitting. I'm not sure. I have to look, look it up. They have a Facebook page. Yes. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. find where they're at. So, so good. Okay. Now I got to think of another, one more question. Pets. Do you have pets? We do. Tell me about your pets. I have two dogs, uh, Duke and Daisy. Oh. I am highly allergic to them. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was one of those things. Um, Jesse's like, we should get a dog. And I was like, why don't we get two? And then he comes home from work, and there's two dogs in the house. Uh -huh. And that was how I found out I was highly allergic to my breakout hives oh, and stuff no. like that. But we're making it through. We've had them for a year. They were actually born on Waylon's birthday, so oh, really? June 30th of last year. So they just turned a year with Waylon. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's so good. And what, what kind of dogs? Dobermans. Oh, mm -hmm. those are beautiful. Oh, so <gasps> Such good dogs. I they love are. it. I love it. All right. Well, I think we've made it to the end here, Brittany. It's been <laughs> awesome talking to you. It was good speaking with you. And... I will see, not see, I will hear, I will, you will hear <laughs> me next week with our next Desk Side Chat. Thanks, yes. Brittany. Bye-bye.